Okay, now that we've got both of them sewn, um, we both have boxed corners. You want to make sure the inside and the outside have the boxed corners, otherwise uh, they won't fit right. Um, you want to turn one of them inside out. Either one, it doesn't really matter. Um, and the one that looks right side out, it doesn't have any, sorry, doesn't have any seams showing. Um, you want to stick this one inside of the one that does have the seams showing on the outside. So just line them up. Okay. So now on the inside, all your seams are showing. And then on the outside, all your seams are showing. And you want to make sure that it looks like that so that when we flip it inside out, it looks right. Okay, um, I am going to take one of the strips of fleece that we cut earlier, the small ones, and loop the um, little loop through it. And you don't have to do this. You can just do the loop. And you want to kind of just put this inside by this, um, by the seam. You want to make sure that the seams are kind of, kind of smooshing it. See how it's in there? You want to make sure that the um, the loop is inside of where you're sewing, so it'll go on the inside. Go ahead and just pin it. Make sure that it doesn't move. You may want to use a different pin color than the side, the color of your fabric, because um, we're not going to be able to see that real good. But that's just me. I'll take a chance. We'll see how it goes. Again, go ahead, take your little loop, your fleece with the loop through it, and stick it in on the other side. We want to make sure that we have two loops to hang it from, otherwise we'll have a crooked bonding or crooked pouch, not a bonding pouch. This is a cage pouch. And just make sure it's in there good. And pin it. See how it's it's pinned through right there and on both sides. Okay, now we want to sew all the way around. We want to leave a gap about an inch and a half wide. Okay, so we're going to sew from here all the way around to here. Okay, we're going to leave this gap open like this. We don't want to sew this closed, otherwise we won't be able to turn the pouch inside out and have safe seams. Okay, so here we go. An attachment that I have to take off of mine. You may too, um, so that it'll slip over really easy and comfortably. So go ahead, put the stitch in, and um, it's best to do the back stitch uh, trick that I taught you. You go forward and then backwards. It kind of ties it in a knot here because we're going to be pulling a lot of fleece through this little hole, and we don't want it to rip. So go ahead and put in about four stitches and then hit your back button for four stitches. You may or may not have this. You may have to use the side on yours. Um, some of them do it manually. So you may want to do that. I'm not sure. I know that's how my mom's works, but hers is about a 1960s model. So I don't know what you're working with. Now when you come to um, your pin, you want to pull it out just before the needle gets there. You can break a needle like that. So go ahead and make sure that it'll fit under your foot. Um, my foot has a setting on it to where it will um, raise with the fleece. The fleece is a really thick fabric, so you want to make sure all three of them, um, all three of these layers can stick through there. Sometimes I have to give it a little yank. go around the rest of the way. Again, we're coming up to that pin again. We want to take that out. And make sure your foot will take it. Okay, let's make sure that we're leaving about an inch and a half here. And doing our back stitch. Cut it 
off. I'm going to cut as close here as we can. Don't cut your fabric. Okay. Now you see we've got this tiny little hole here. And it's about big enough for maybe two or three fingers to fit in. So you can open that up. I like to stick my finger inside in the bottom corner and kind of push that bottom corner out. See how I've got the inside of the pouch? It's kind of pushing through that little hole and you want to pull it and pull it out. Now whatever kind of connectors you use, you want to make sure that they go, up, go through okay. See, you don't want to rip anything, so make sure that those come through before you pull too much lace through. Now get your bottom little corner again on the outside. Come back through that little hole again and pull it. Okay. Sometimes it's a little more challenging. It depends on how big you made your hole. Okay. So we've got this little hole open here and sugies can get in there. So we want to be careful and sew this off. Okay. Um, to sew this off, there's a couple options. Um, some people like to hand stitch it. I don't feel comfortable hand stitching it because my hand stitching is always too loose. So um, I'm going to use a sewing machine and I'm going to stitch from here to here with the tightest stitch I have and make sure that I don't have any loops or anything like that when I get done. Okay, so let's stitch it up. Again, I don't use very many pins because fleece kind of sticks to itself. But if you don't feel comfortable without using pins, um, you can use pins here as well. Okay. Make sure you back stitch if you have it available to use because you want to um, make sure that that's knotted off really well. take a seam ripper to fix. But if you look, see you can't even see really the seam at all. It's just kind of like this little indentation there. That way little shug toes can't get stuck in there and you don't have any problems. Now if we want to go ahead and take the inside piece, mine is going to be the red, and push it in. And you'll see that we have a perfectly good pouch. And it's got boxed corners. And it's big enough for two, sometimes three shugs, depending on how small your shugs are. Okay. And there it is. Inside and out. And it's completely reversible if you want. You see there's no seams showing. Box corners are all flush. And there we have it. <laughs>